Hey everyone, it's David Michael. Uh, this isn't one of my normal vinyl videos. Um, I wanted to talk about the closure of HMV Canada um, and its 102 stores um, across this great country of ours. Um, I have a, a special interest in HMV, which I'll discuss uh, in a few minutes. But um, as I film this, it's um, you can either call it late Saturday night or early Sunday morning. Um, I just got back from DJing, so it's uh, very late. Um, so it was announced Friday out of the blue that HMV Canada was closing. And if you're not from Canada, uh, for many years HMV um, was um, the largest music um, retailer for brick and mortar stores. Um, currently, they have 102 locations across Canada. Um, so it was it was announced out of the blue Friday that they were closing all their stores. They had gone to receivership and. Um, it came as quite a surprise. Um, I live about five minutes away from the biggest HMV um, in my city, um, one of the biggest in Canada, at uh, the big West Edmonton Mall, if you're familiar with my city. A lot of people know West Edmonton Mall, but I live about five minutes away from that location, and I'm there all the time because it's five minutes away. Um, it's convenient to go there and buy um, you know, vinyl and CDs. Um, I don't always have time to go to you know across the city where all the record stores are kind of all grouped together. And, uh, you know, I was in there quite a bit over Christmas, um, getting gifts and shopping for myself, and business seemed fine. So Friday's announcement uh, came as uh, quite a shock. Um, and if you're from Canada and you're familiar with what's happening, you, it, it might have been shocking to you as well. So um, before I continue, cheers, everyone. Um, so, I worked for HMV. I managed a lot of their stores here in my city. I started there in 1999, and I believe I was there until about 2004. Um, before HMV, uh, just to kind of give you some perspective of uh, how important HMV was um, to the Canadian music retail landscape. Um, before 1999, I had worked for. Um, a smaller music store, hybrid stereo music. Um, you know, it was a stereo store that had a, a, a CD department within that stereo store. And um, it had started to gather steam, the CD department. It was losing money when I kind of got the job as manager. I started there as part-timer and worked my way up. And and I had built the store up and built the store up and um, to the point where it was doing quite fantastic. And then. I got headhunted by HMV by, um, I believe uh, his name was Pete, he was a Western Canadian manager at the time, and he came into my store one day and headhunted me and it was kind of like being called up to the, uh, to, the, to the big club, to the major leagues, um, and before I had been in the farm team, and it, it, it was quite a big deal at the time for me, um, being told by you know, this big behemoth company that I'm worthy, uh, you know, they thought enough of me to head hunt me, head hunt me and hire me away from my current job. So, um, you know, from there I took a management position um, at their smallest location while I kind of cut my teeth and got familiar with their environment and I think all in all I managed five of their stores. Um, I managed one of their stores twice and then at the end I got um, the big coveted position, which was West Edmonton Mall, where at the time it was the second biggest um, music retail store in Canada behind the Toronto Superstore. It was two floors. Um, to give you some kind of idea how big the store was, it had its own self-contained DJ booth um, that employees would take shifts um, actually DJing music in the store. It was, uh, it was quite great. Um, we had um, separate rooms for country music and um, electronic and rap and those um, little rooms weren't so little they were kind of almost bigger than a lot of other people's um, stores record stores that's how big the store was um, so I got the position um, at HMV West Edmonton Mall and this was kind of like the tail end of the glory years I guess at HMV it was kind of um, you know when mp3s were coming in and um, HMV was horribly mismanaging their stores at the time and um, 
Yeah. So I mean, but my time there was 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 great. I I learned more about business from um, working there, and um, a lot of great memories um, from working at uh, HMV. It, I know um, the store now has it's kind of a dirty word with music fans. Um, so, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so, anyways, I, I knew the writing was on the wall in about two thousand four. Um, a lot of things happened within the company. One of them being um, um, the H and B in the United Kingdom was still doing very, very well. Um, they're, you know, their kind of music is more ingrained in them. I, I feel. Um, so people there were still buying physical um, CDs and records and tapes and all that. In Canada, it started to slide, and the minute they started to see it slide, um, the H and B head people in Canada, the well, they kind of somehow decided that Canadians couldn't run their stores anymore, um, that we weren't able to understand the musical landscape. So what they started doing is they started bringing in people from the UK to run kind of the important positions, um, not store management, but you know the big important jobs within Canada. They started hiring people from the UK because us dumb Canadians can't possibly run record stores. So they started paying for people to come over and paying for their visas and paying for their moving costs and slowly they, they kind of got rid of a lot of the um, Canadian people who were running the business and replaced them with people from the UK and big surprise it didn't work out. So. Um, when that started to happen, I kind of, I knew the writing was on the wall, and I, um, fortunately, I got a job um, at a, a, a different record store, and that turned out to be a fantastic 10-year run at that store until I opened my own store. Anyways, I kind of digress. That's my history with HMV. Um, so, about I think 2011 was the first time that HMV had gone into receivership, and they were bought by new owners. Um, and everything looked really great. They were doing really well. And then a lot of little things started to happen. Um, they started changing their stores over um, where the music played less and less and less of a role in their stores, took up less square footage, and it was being replaced by DVDs. Um, if you might have a, some stores in your city called like Hot Topic and Spencer's. They be, started becoming one of those stores. Um, selling lots of memorabilia and t-shirts and mugs and toys and stuff like that and it was becoming less and less about music and then um, my local HMV and that um, in, in the West Hamilton Mall the big one um, the kind of the, the final thing that kind of happened that told me something maybe wasn't quite right um, or people were making some bad decisions is the main floor was their CDs, vinyl, music DVDs, things like that, music. And one day I go into that store and they've moved everything up to the smaller upstairs and the whole downstairs became DVDs. And then slowly um, they started reducing that and like I said, it became like a hot topic kind of, Spencer's kind of place. And you had to go up the escalator to find the music and it was just shoved into this corner. And But having said that, you know, even though that kind of pissed off a lot of music people. Um, it was always busy. So um, apparently something wasn't quite right at HMV because like I said, Friday they have um, went into receivership and um, it's kind of one of those missed great opportunities they had where, you know, they should have went, you know, in my opinion, and of course I was on the inside for a long time. Um, their, their greatest mistake is they, they never really got into vinyl that seriously. Although the West Edmonton Mall store um, had a decent vinyl selection. Um, there were other stores, um, it was kind of, it was pretty pitiful. Um, so to find music at other smaller h &B stores apart from the, the big one was, um, it was a challenge. And like I said, it was becoming 80% trinkets and it's, it pissed off a lot of people. So what it did is it, they froze out the music customer and then they froze out their kind of long time clientele by changing the stores over. And, you know, 
it, it was, it's, you know, like I said, they had this great opportunity once they, the owners bought them and things looked like they were turning around and then zoom. Yeah, so like I said, uh, you know, I'm saying I'm surprised, but in retrospect, maybe, I don't know, maybe not so much. Um, you know, there's not a lot of competition for music these days, for physical uh, music, but there's tons of competition for what they kind of directed their stores towards, and nobody's buying DVDs anymore. You can go to thrift stores and get any DVD for two bucks nowadays, and yet, you know, they had more square footage devoted to DVDs um, than anything else, which was, go figure that one. So, like I said, Friday, um, the announcement came, and I thought, well, you know, they have a, um, a club points reward card called HMV Pure. It's, um, you know, you accumulate points as you buy stuff, and the news came, and I thought, well, I better maybe go down Saturday and use up my points, because generally when stores go into receivership, they kind of phase out those reward programs, and I had built up a lot of points. So I thought I better use these points. Um, there was no sale announced or anything like that because it's just, you know, this happened Friday and then Saturday morning I'm in there with my son. And, and it's, uh, the stores, you know, I walk in and there's not a lot of stock there. And the staff are dismantling um, bins and displays. And I ask one of the employees what's happening and, you know, all of a sudden with just out of, just unannounced, um, there's a huge clearance sale. They're trying to get rid of everything quickly and shut it down. They have until April 30th to close all 102 stores, but of course they want to wrap things up well before that. So, you know, I you know I I didn't go there with intention to take advantage of their situation. Um, a lot of people would, um, but seeing that you know I, I invested a lot of years and. A lot of, like I said, blood, sweat, and tears into that store. It kind of went in more of a, it was my club points, and you know, who knows how long my store was gonna be open, so I wanted to have another final look. Um, you know, show my son. Uh, the first year I was at that H&B with Sam Tamal was, um, I got the job and my son was born a couple months later, so um, there's a lot of fond memories. So I, I went in and, I, you know, I'm not gonna turn this into, um, showing you what I bought, I'll, you know, I'll do that in another video. Um, but I started to talk to the staff um, that, you know, I got to know from going there so, so often. And a lot of them knew, you know, that I had run that store in years gone by, and some of them didn't. So I started to talk, talk to them about the history of, you know, my, my experience with the store, and, and they were telling me that they got zero warning which happens, it's not, it's not unsurprising, but um, still there, you know, there's 102 stores closing, there's over 1,300 employees terminated, or going to be slowly phased out um, as the stores close, and um, seeing the looks on their faces, um, you know, a lot of them are young kids. Um, having said that, when I worked for H&B, um, you know, that was the last, kind of era of employees being really into music and it was a music culture and you could go into any store by and large I'm generalizing but you know you could ask an employee for something and they wouldn't have to run to the computer to look it up like they do nowadays they would know off the bat um, they could help you and um, they could converse with you on your level about music which unfortunately doesn't happen nowadays. Um, it, you know, they don't hire people based on music knowledge anymore, or their willingness, or you know, the love for the music. It's who can they hire at the lowest pay rate? I'm guessing and shove in there because you know I've gone in there and asked for the most basic kind of stuff, you know, and they're go they're running to the computer to look it up. So, having said that, you know, and I know, and that aspect has pissed off a lot of kind of music people in my city, maybe other cities as well, is the, the the staff that has no knowledge of what they have, and it's not their fault, you know, it's the it's the corporation that hired them. So that's, that's what they wanted, they wanted um, 
people who were uneducated about music, who were just there to fill a space, who could ring a, who could run a till. But having said that, you know there were there were, there were a, lot, a lot of good people there that I've got to meet over the years since I've left H and B and young people who are working at that store now, and you can see the expression on their face, uh, the, the shock, you know, and I felt bad as I talked to them, and you know, and we kind of swapped some stories, you know, about my experiences there and what their experiences is, is you know, is now, and um, I had gone through a sudden store closure um, at the store I worked at after h &B when um, the owner died suddenly, and we kind of we had to shut the door fairly quickly um, after that, so I had I had kind of been through something similar. Um, so it was it's you know it's it's kind of bittersweet because as I, I was thinking about it today, you, you could see the errors of their way. You know, like I said a lot of people who see my videos know that you know I was in the business for twenty two years. At a lot of different retail, um, a lot of different music retail kind of situations, and so you know, I I can kind of pick little aspects of parts of their business where I could kind of see where they were going wrong, and it's like I said, it's unfortunate. Um, they, you know, there's 1,300 young people out of jobs and 102 stores closed, and yeah, like I said, it's kind of um, it, you know, it, you know, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for them because they steered their ship so horribly wrong. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a it's kind of a bittersweet end to HMV for me personally, um, having invested um, a lot of years there. And, um, like I said, back in the back in the day, the, the employees. You know, one of those kind of key things I was talking about when I knew the end was near uh, of my run there was they started to phase out the knowledgeable employees. Um, a lot of the employees were really mature, kind of you know people in their twenties, early thirties, um, who loved that job and loved it for the music and would hang, you know, hung on to those jobs for many years. And they started to phase those people out. They started to phase out the younger, the older managers, sorry, and hiring young, inexperienced people to replace them and that was one of those key things that I kind of thought you know you piece this together this together and this together and um, you kind of knew something was going wrong at that store in about 2000 you know 2005 2004 around there when you know when you start phasing out your knowledgeable staff um, who people have got to know you know who have a clientele um, you know when they want to phase those people out and hire them with cheaper um, employment, you know, kids, um, you know, that's a telltale sign to me that, you know, things are changing, and they did. Um, so, yeah, so, like I said, I went there today and had a final look around the store as, you know, they're dismantling, you know, it's a day later, and they're, they're dismantling displays, and stock is flying off the shelves as they kind of quietly announced this sale in the store and um, people were going hog wild emptying the shelves and um, it was kind of sad to see the end of H&B you know I, I had I've lived through the end of a lot of music retail stores in Canada um, A&B and uh, Mr. Sound and um, a and a and Sam the Record Man and um, this is this is the last one to go and I don't necessarily think H&B can blame streaming or mp3s on this one um, i'm sure it plays a part but there's a lot of independent music stores thriving right now because you know there there are people who want physical products and h and had that chance to be the leaders in that and they decided to go mugs <laughs> and then you know t-shirts and you know that horrible shit that hot topics sells and you know if five years ago they would have they would have really went hard into the vinyl and they would have really kind of tried to be a little bit more credible on that end of things. I think they would have done really well and probably um, they're closing 102 stores. I'm going to bet 30, 40 of them of those probably should have been closed years ago. A little smaller 
satellite stores throughout Canada. So, you know, there's a lot of factors like that that probably, in retrospect, you know, could have saved them possibly. You know, that's my opinion anyways. It's been a lot of years since I've been out of that company, but like I said, I was uh, enough years in the business to kind of, I could see some contributing factors to that um, announcement Friday. So um, if you're Canadian, um, I know, like I said, um, amongst people probably older than 30, um, HMB is kind of a dirty word. Um, you know, you don't want to associate it with music, <laughs> you know, because that pisses off a lot of people, like I said. But, you know, having said that, you know, there was, you know, there was good stuff there. Um, it was convenient, and it uh, it's the end of, you know, it's the end of the brick and mortar store retail chain in Canada, so... Yeah, it was kind of a sad day for me as I went to that store one final time. I I don't suspect I'll go back there and visit again. Um, but via Facebook today, I heard uh, from a lot of uh, people I worked with at the time from H&B, um, you know, reminiscing about our time there. And we were kind of consoling each other via Facebook, <laughs> you know. And uh, a lot of those people I met at H&B all those years ago when I worked there, um, I'm still friendly with and they're good people and yeah so uh, like I said I'm kind of rambling now but it's uh, like I said it's the end of an era if you have music in your soul like I do um, and you know you've worked in the business for as many years as I did it's, um, I, I can't help but feel a little bit uh, defeated at the moment that uh, you know that grand era of retail music stores is seemingly over now so yeah so uh, like I said uh, you know I guess R.I.P. H.M.V. <laughs> and uh, you know I guess we'll have to soldier on with what music stores we have left so it's kind of more important now than ever to support your local music store um, don't let the bastards win <laughs> being uh, alternative to physical media that's my opinion only I'm going to end things here now, uh, as the video is kind of going on a bit now. So, um, like I said, it was a sad day, and um, if, you're, if you made it through the video, thank you very much for listening to my little uh, my eulogy to HMV, my former employer of many years. So, I'm going to sign off now. Yeah. So, if you're watching this and you're uh, an ex HMV employee, greetings to you all. you feel a little bit like I do today so there you go take care everyone this has been David Michael and we'll catch up to you again